Linux machines have a host name. And the host name is not all they have, but that's kind of an important thing. And you can type in host name when you're in your machine and it'll tell you your name. In this case, my machine is called client. If I wanted to change the host name, well, that requires a little bit more root access. The host name itself is stored in the etc host name file. You can see it's client right there. I can go ahead and change it if I wanted to and then reboot my system and it'll have a new host name. That's one way to do it. But what if I want to change it without rebooting? Well, let's just go ahead and make some changes. So I'm going to switch over to root. And the first thing I do is try editing my host name. So I do host name client two, just like that. And it will set the host name to client two. If I type in host name, it's currently listed as client two. If I cat out the etc host name file, it says client. So what I've done is change the host name in memory, but not on the hard disk. Okay, if I want to change it now on the hard disk, I can do nano on the etc host name file and change that to client2 right here as well, and then exit. Now, typically a host name is not all you have. Sometimes you have a host name and a domain name. So what if I wanted to do that? Well, I can go in and put it right here, dot example.com. So now it has a host name and a domain name, which is nice. But if I type in host name, it still doesn't have the domain name listed. Okay. So what if I want to change it and change it better? Well, there is a tool called HostNameCTL. HostNameCTL lists a lot of information. You can see that my static host name, what it's going to boot up as the next time is client2.example.com because that's what's in the hostname file. My transient hostname is client2 without the .example.ctr.com. And that is because if I type in hostname, that's what I get. If I were to reboot it, then they would be the same. I wouldn't have to have two separate names there. It also lists information about my chassis, information about my system, architecture, and other stuff like that. Okay. I can do other commands with host name CTL. So let's take a look at that. Host name CTL. Let's do a man on that. So if I do man, I can get information about host name CTL. And I can scroll down and I can see, okay, this is the default behavior. It shows status. If I do hostname to deal with the hostname command, then I can either display the hostname or I can change the hostname. So either hostname by itself as a command, or I can have the name that it wants to be changed to. I also have different things about icon type and chassis type and deployment environment and location. I can have all these things set there. So let's go ahead and change my hostname. Uh, so it's not client2.example.com. So I do host name CTL. If I just type in host name as my one command, it just displays that. If I put the whole thing in here, I can do client.example.com without the two, and it will change it. Now, if I run the host name CTL command, you can see that it has changed the static host name. There's no transient host name anymore. And it has changed the file as well. So I can take a look at that. You can see host name. I can see example.com. And if I dive in a host name, I can see that it is client.example.com. So the best way to do it would be to change both of them at the same time with the host name, CTL, host name, and then the argument of the actual name you want to change it to. And that will set it. And there you go. Host names.